Many countries around the world have some select few businesses that the country is particularly famous for. Sweden is famous for IKEA and Mojang, Switzerland for UBS, Saudi Arabia for Saudi Aramco, Japan has Nintendo, and the list goes on. Going down under, Australia is best represented by a household hardware company called Bunnings Warehouse. It is the crown of the blue-collar workforce and encompasses the Australian value of mateship through its regular sausage sizzles or barbecues and community fundraisers. But putting aside all the glamour, the company has a strong monopoly on the household hardware industry in Australia with an approximated 50% of the market share. Monopolies of this strength are hard to come by and it begs the question, how did they become so dominant? And how were they able to kick out Masters Home Improvement out of the industry? Bunnings originally started as a small sawmill in Western Australia in 1886 by two brothers, Arthur and Robert Bunning. During the gold mining boom in Australia and the early 1900s, the brothers would expand to brick making and selling other building supplies. Towards World War II, Robert's three sons took over the business, and Bunnings Bros became a shipbuilder for Australia's Federal Ministry of Munitions. They created snake boats, which were used for Allied offensives into Japanese-controlled territory. A post-war housing boom in Australia prefaced the path for the company to go public in 1952. Nine years later, their first retail store opened in Western Perth. Despite all this, it wasn't until 1994 when the company experienced massive growth. They were wholly bought out by Wes Farmers, one of Australia's biggest conglomerates that is famous for owning Target Australia, Kmart Australia, Officeworks and a 15% stake in Coles Group. Wes Farmers transformed Bunnings into the giant it is today. 1994 saw its first warehouse style store opened. Today, they have 295 of them and they are a huge success. In 2019, they surpassed $13 billion in revenue and $1.6 billion in profit before tax. But Wes Farmers can't have only made the business succeed so well just by making bigger stores. These are the various other strategies that were implemented since to make them so successful. Bunnings, like most big businesses, uses the power of psychology in their marketing. The crux of their entire pricing strategy and marketing strategy is to be viewed as cheap and high quality. Bunnings stocks many similar items at identical prices to their competitors, and yet, Bunnings is viewed as an inexpensive option compared to them. Why is this? If you've seen one ad for Bunnings Warehouse, you'll have heard this quote. If you happen to find a lower price on a stocked item, we'll beat it by 10%. That is a great store policy. Just hearing that makes you think they're very cheap and concerned with giving you the best price. However, they barely ever have to uphold that guarantee. This is because they purposely don't stock many exact copies of other competitors' items. Instead, they stock almost identical products. Their competitors don't want to stock the same items as Bunnings either, as they don't want Bunnings to undercut them and take away a sale. They push this further. If you've ever walked into a Bunnings warehouse, you've probably asked yourself why their prices are so irregular and odd. A lot of their prices end in 6 cents or 2 cents or maybe 7 cents. These prices have been carefully chosen to be that way despite how odd it seems. The first reason is that likely they mark up their margins to a certain percentage, which makes for irregular prices. But the far more important reason is to give the impression that they've cut their prices to be at the lowest possible cent, that they've actually put effort into making it cheap. Even the marketing strategy of Bunnings bolsters this perception of their low prices. Take a look at this ad. You can have a small project in mind. When you come into the store with our lowest prices, you can actually start a project that's actually bigger than what you thought and actually get it finished. Upright P-handled trolley, only $17.98. Karcher pressure washer, $88. Estillo stainless steel sink, $99. Torbman's 4-litre Easy Coat paint, $49.90. 2-litre sea salt twin pack, just $12.98. We've got the widest range and at the lowest prices. Lowest prices are just the beginning. Every single one of their ads follows this formula. 
Bunnings ads are purposely made to look low budget and friendly, which is exactly how they want to look. Cheap and customer oriented, which is a fantastic brand image to hold. Despite looking low budget, they are masterfully crafted for this exact purpose, planting the image they want you to think in your head, and it works rather well. Even the staff in these ads also constantly nail the message into your head. They are cheap. And we all believe it. When you come into the store with our lowest prices, you... It's really exciting when they come in and go, wow, you guys really are the lowest prices. Yeah, we're the lowest prices. I can't do it and afford it. Nobody can beat Bunnings at our prices. Lowest prices are just the beginning. They take one more interesting approach. Companies like Apple are famous for not revealing or showing their prices in very small fine print to not make you think about the price, but rather experience the product and buy based on that emotion. Despite Bunnings not actually having low prices, they make the price tag extremely visible and large as a sort of means of reverse psychology. This price tag is big and again, Therefore, it must be cheap. Bunnings originally started just selling homeware tools and materials. This wasn't going to be enough on its own to outcompete the others. To add to their customer experience, they now provide almost every kind of service related to their industry. Within a Bunnings warehouse, they have cafes, gas swaps, hire and rent services, kids' activities, pool water testing key cutting, and DIY workshops where they teach you a new skill like how to cut wood. For home services, they do almost every kind of trade, any kind of assembly, and many kinds of repairs. The list includes barbecue assembly, door installation, painting jobs, garage door installation, cabinet assembly, and around 30 other services. They want to be the go-to place for any kind of household job. During this pandemic, as of this week, most of their stores around Australia are even implementing a drive and collect scheme where customers can pick up supplies without ever having to go in contact with any staff or having to even exit their car. A brilliantly convenient option to keep people buying at their stores. Their competitors don't have any such service as of yet. To summarise their customer service strategy, I spoke to a Bunnings employee who's been there for several years when I asked what they were taught to do to sell the most products or do the best job. She simply replied, we don't have any customer service strategies, we just simply answer any questions and give the best help we can give. This statement has been supported by the data, they continuously get the number one spot as the highest customer satisfaction rates within their industry for several years now. Bunnings Warehouse shows that a completely customer oriented approach can really pay off, and also that the consumer mind can always be manipulated to think what a business wants them to think. And with that, the video has come to a close. Let me know what other businesses you would like me to analyze and how I can give better videos for you. I shall see you again soon.